Greetings once again, Python coders. This is Alan D. Moore, author of this book, Python GUI Programming with TK Inter. Available wherever fine programming books are sold. And in this video, we're going to do a little bit more with layouts. So this is part four of a series. If you have not been following with us so far, you might want to go back to part one and get up to speed. We've been building a little diary application and it's all laid out on the root window using grid right now, which is fine for a small GUI like this, but as our GUIs get bigger and more complex, there are some things we might like to do. We're also going to look at how to do a scroll bar in this video. So let's dive right in. Okay, so when you're doing a layout, We've already seen that every widget takes a parent widget, and so far we've been using root for that. But we don't have to use root, we can actually use any widget we want. Most commonly, to organize a GUI, we're going to use something called a frame. So up here under subject, I'm going to create a frame that we can use to hold the label and the entry together. So it'll look like this. So we'll call it subject frame. And the class is tk.frame. And a frame is it's just a blank widget. It's like an empty panel. Now to put our widgets on that frame, first thing we need to do is change their parent widgets. So from root, we're going to put subject frame. And with the entry as well, we're going to do subject frame. And once we've put these on another widget, the geometry manager resets. So we're no longer going to be gridding them uh, with respect to the root window. The grid is now with respect to the subframe. And in fact, we don't even have to use grid. We could just use something else. We could use pack. Uh, as you know from previous videos, you can't mix geometry managers on a single parent widget, but when you're using a different parent widget, you can use a totally different geometry manager. Uh, we'll stick with grid right now just to be consistent. And we actually don't need to change anything here because this is going to be row zero of the subject frame. Now we have to add subject frame to the root window. And actually, I should up here under TK at frame specify root as its parent. So we'll go ahead and grid that. And now we're only using one column. Let, let me go ahead and save that. Let's show you what that looks like. So notice now this label and the entry are in column one because they're on one widget. So what root sees as far as this child widget is just that one frame. And it's all going in column one. We'll go ahead and get category in its own frame. Cat frame, tk dot frame, root as the parent. And we'll change to cat frame. Option menu on cat frame. Now, like I said, our grid coordinates are now reset because these the, the label and the option menu are now on the frame, not on the root. So we can go ahead and actually just get rid of that row and column because this will be at row zero, column one. Sorry, the label will be at zero, zero. The input will be at zero, one. And then we need to add our cat frame to the root. And we can just call grid without arguments because we want it in the next available row in the first column. And that's the default for grid. OK. No reason to put private input. But we can get rid of its row and column specification because, again, we just want it on the first column of the next available row. Now on our message input, 
Let's go ahead and get rid of row and column, because again, we want it on the next row in the first column. And we no longer need column span because we only have one column. And for our save button, we'll go ahead and get rid of column. We'll keep the row. I'll tell you what, we'll just get rid of row. We don't need that either. All right, so we don't need row or column on save button either because that's going to just be in that one column on the root window now. And for our status bar, we'll, we'll keep the row 100. We can get rid of column and column span. We'll save that. Let's run it. We still have this over here because of our column configure statement up at the top. Let's go ahead and change that to 0 weight equals 1, and we'll run it again. All right. Okay, one thing we're going to want to do when we grid these is we are going to want to set the sticky. We'll just do it the short way. Sticky equals U. That's east-west, by the way. This one will just do east, so it sticks on one side. Let's give that a shot. All right, there we go. Now this does become verbose, because if I want these to stretch out again, I do need on my subframes to also do a column configure. So we'll do that. Subject frame. Specify the weight cat frame column configure weight equals one run that oops we wanted to actually configure one column one to have that weight not the labels let's do that and let's run it again there we go so now each of these frames we've got it configured now notice that these don't line up, okay? And that's because each one of them is its own separate frame. We're no longer in a grid where every column is going to be kept intact. Um, each row is its own independent frame in which there's a grid, okay? So it's something to keep in mind. And, and obviously for this GUI, this is just kind of pointless to add these extra frames. I'm just showing you how it's done because as you get into more complicated GUIs you're going to want to do that. Okay so the next thing that I want to show you is a different kind of frame called a label frame. It's just like a frame except it has a label and we're gonna put our message input on one. So right here above message input I'm gonna create message frame. That's gonna be TK dot label frame. We'll put that on root. Now label frame takes an argument of text and we'll just say message. Well let's go ahead and put our input on message frame and let's add message frame dot grid and we'll stick it to all sides north south east west run that and now you can see our message is inside of this box which has a little message specification and of course to expand that we need to do a column configure again message frame column configure 0 weight equals 1 There we go. Now we're inside that message frame. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a scroll bar to our text widget. And why would we want to do that? Well, let's run our application real quick. And 
let me just paste in some text here. Just the standard lorem ipsum here. I'm going to paste it down until I go below the bottom. Now notice it's just cut off. I can use my scroll wheel or my trackpad to scroll up and down here, but I don't have any visual indication of where I'm at in the scrolling, and I don't have any way, you know, with the mouse button that I could control that. What we want there is a scroll bar. So let's add one. Now in TK Enter, there are only certain widgets that can respond to a scroll bar. You can't do this just arbitrarily for anything. Unfortunately, it does not work on a frame. Uh, there's a way around that, but it's a little more complicated, but it does work on our text widget. Our text widget is able to scroll. So to do that, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a scroll bar. So we'll just call it scroll bar. And that is a tk.scrollbar widget. And of course, it needs to be on the message frame. And let's go ahead and grid that. Scrollbar.grid row equals 0, column equals 1. And we will stick it to the east side of that frame. All right. Oh, actually, we want to stick it to the north, south, and east sides so that it stretches the full height of that frame. Let's run that. And we have a scroll bar. So if I paste in my text again, we have a scroll bar, but it doesn't respond. Okay, there's another step we need to take here. We need to tell the scroll bar that it needs to work with that text input. So to do that, there's some connections we need to make. First off, we need to connect the scroll bar to the message frame so that when we move the scroll bar, it moves the message frame. And we do that by configuring its command keyword. And that goes to the message inputs y view method. Okay, so we've got a command argument for our scroll bar. Just like for a button, it has a command. When it's activated, it needs to have a callback. So we're setting that callback to the y view of the message input. And y view is a method that will scroll that up and down. There's also x view, which would scroll it horizontally. Okay, but we also need to tell our scroll bar, if we were to say scroll our text widget using a using the mouse or something like that, we need to tell our scroll bar to adjust itself, and it also needs to know like where am I at in the content. So to do that, our message frame has a configuration argument called y scroll command. And we need to set that equal to scrollbar.set. So again, this is an argument, y scroll command. There's also an x scroll command for scrolling horizontally. But we want to connect the vertical scrolling to the scroll bar set. And that'll, that means when we scroll our message frame in some other way, it will tell the scroll bar, hey, you need to set yourself to here where I'm scrolling to. Let's go ahead and run that. Oop, I got a little bug here. Sorry, it shouldn't be the message frame. It's the message input that we connect. Apologies if that confused you. All right, let's save that. Now let's paste in lorem ipsum, and you can see hopefully that the scroll bar over here is now functional. So there you go, that is using subframes and using a scroll bar. And remember, you can't use a scroll bar with just anything, you can use it with a text input, you can use it with a canvas, which we'll talk about in a future video. You can use it with a tree view, which we'll talk about in a future video. 
and if you do some workarounds you can use it with other things as well um, which we'll get into later hope this has been educational for you I plan to have some more videos coming soon for now remember to check out the book Python GUI programming with TK Inter take care and God bless